Hey everybody, uh, good to see you. I'm here with Will. Uh, Turtle Golf Tips, check him out. He's got his own channel. I don't know about you, but when I have students come to me and I see them for the first time, they all want to work on driver, and I say that's fine. And then I always ask them about their short game, and they always tell me their short game's great. And what I always find out is their short game is lousy. Could not agree more. So we're going to show you some situations and some shots and how to improve that. And for most of you guys that are higher handicappers, this is the stuff that's going to reduce your scores the fastest. Normally short game is my strength, but over the last year or so, I've developed kind of the yips when it comes to a uphill lie shot. I end up, I hit a lot of shanks with it. And, uh, you know, I know what you're supposed to do. I know that we're supposed to lean with with the slope and kind of just let it happen, but you know, I don't know what's going on. All right, let me just watch you hit a few. All right, this one's somewhat mild of a slope here. Of course, that one was okay. Oh, right, that was good. Don't complain about okay ones. <laughs> exactly. There's a couple of things that I would tell you. Um, one, um, I like how you set up to this, though, you know, we've always been told to go get our shoulders and our weight and everything with the hill. With the hill. But I think you're probably exaggerating that too okay. much. Okay. Um, I don't think that's as necessary. Um, I think, um, especially on level lies, you know, I pretty much like shoulders level or maybe even if you can get your left shoulder lower. Okay. So I think when you're trying to get this way on this uphill, I think it gives you an angle of attack that's pretty hard to, to, uh, to match up with the ball. Okay. Um, and then, so stay a little more level not perfectly level and set up where you can take a practice swing for me okay and then just tell me where you bottom out there still looked like slightly slightly ahead of the ball there yeah well yes yeah, slightly ahead of where the ball's at now i agree but that's how far forward this should be played okay so so your practice swing is going to tell you where you're bottoming out every slope's different so you're going to bottom out in different places. Okay, so that's just something that I need to pay attention more when. Yeah, to where you're bottoming out place, and in my opinion, if you're hitting the hosel, you're you probably don't have the ball farther far enough forward on these uphill lies. And then I also I think when you mention the the tilt, I think sometimes I overdo that tilt, and yeah. then I'm pointed way to the right. Yeah, absolutely. And then boom, shankopotamus. Yeah, I agree. All right, so I got this like. Yeah, I'm pretty right. much off my left foot, yeah. like outside of it. Good, hit it. That sounded a lot better. Yeah, it <laughs> sounded very, very clean. <laughs> you hit it farther just because you because mm -hmm. you hit it better. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I would totally agree with that. Yeah. So take a practice swing again. Okay. Feeling level. Yeah, I've been trying to feel more level. Yeah. You may not be perfectly level on an extreme uphill eye, but okay. yes bottoming out just kind of in front of my forward foot mm -hmm. but that's just because your stance is really yeah. narrow it's not bottoming out past your shoulder over here. okay would yeah. you agree with that I, I would agree with that uh, now for uphill lies do you do you like pressuring into the your lead side or do you like staying 50 50 i probably like staying 50 50. Okay. I, I used to be a big leaner on the left proponent but what I found for most people is if your feet are pretty close together, that you can be 50-50. And I find most people use the bounce of the club better that way instead would... of the leading edge. So that's an interesting topic. It is an interesting topic. Now, if we could. See, that was good, didn't you think? Can I show you so what happens if we come over here? All right. It's extreme, but. You come into these situations and, you know, when I was a kid, I, it didn't used to scare me. Obviously, you got to find, find your footing here. You do. Okay. Obviously, it's kind of side hill 
and uphill. It is. Watch me still. So you still have to take your practice swing and see where you bottom out. Still a lot more ahead of it than I probably would have. Okay, good. Gave myself credit. Now, this is a very extreme lie, but it's very uphill. Uh, what will that do to the loft? Is that going to add loft to the shot? It's going to add a lot of loft, yes. It is. And so he was trying to use a 58 degree wedge. And in my opinion, even though this flag is very close to us here, that's probably too much loft for a hill of this size. And all he's going to do is hit it up in the air and he's going to pull it way to the left with a very lofted club. And so he doesn't have to swing very hard. No, not at all. <laughs> but he's going to get plenty of loft with this pitching wedge, even an eight iron. And just experiment with that a few for me. Okay. I would do the same thing. I would take a practice swing. I would figure out. I'm going to aim away from the flag. Just okay, since that's this is, fine. Since just this is to, more straight up the hill. Just to be, make contact? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. And see where you're bottoming out. And so that's where the ball should go. So right up there. Yep. And then you're just going to swing nice and easy. And. Especially if you got green to work with, you're going to be a lot better off with a less lofted club. Yeah. And you're not going to, need, going to need to make a very big swing, uh -uh. so your chances of miss hitting it are much less. Would you agree with that? Yeah, this is definitely going to be something I think about. Yeah. I think the main thing that I was doing was not getting the ball enough ahead. Yep and then over exaggerating the tilt. I'm not even feeling like I'm tilting. I'm Good. just you, I'm just you, paying attention to where I'm. You probably don't have to feel it. The gravity there is going to tilt. Exactly. I, I don't think you even have to try. All right, Ed. Does that feel better? Feels better. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, one of the things that I found is that I talk a lot with my students about uneven lies when it comes to chipping and pitching. And how many times do we get a flat lie not and very often. Especially at my course, never. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This one either. I mean, yeah, every green's elevated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's you're going to be uphill, downhill, side hill all the time. And so I find that, like, the average guy that I work with, um, they know how to set up to chip off of a level lie, and then they set up the exact same way no matter what the lie is. Mm -hmm. And so I talk about uneven lies a lot. And just like we did with you with uphill, if, I, if I'm uphill and I take a practice stroke, I'm going to bottom out on this lie here pretty far forward. Mm -hmm. If I turn around, I know my back's to the camera here, but if I turn around and go downhill, well, see, I'm going to bottom out way back here. And I'm not going to fight that natural bottom of my arc i'm just going to put the ball where the hill dictates and then the opposite of what you did for me there it's okay on the downhill eye to take more loft because Absolutely, cause you're going to de loft yep. it because mm -hmm. the handle is going to be forward mm -hmm. just and naturally. even side hill see on a level lie chipping i like to only be about a foot from the ball from my toes but if I get the ball above my feet here, I'm going to bottom out way out here because this hill's above me. And so I've got to, on a chip shot from this lie, I've got to be two feet away from the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I stand around this way and I'm going on this downhill one where I actually strike the ground is literally only six or eight inches from my feet. And I've got to put the ball there to make solid contact. Yeah, blow the ball, blow my feet sometimes gives me trouble, but not not recently. Yeah. Oh, it, that's the hardest one for most people. Because you got to change your level. You got to make sure you get down to it. And yeah, but it, you got to get close to it too. See, yeah. I don't think people get close enough. But that's scary if you're if you're right up against it. Yep, and you've hit it off the hosel before. That's <laughs> yep. scary to get that close, but. You really won't bottom out correctly unless you are there in my and but every slope's different. Every just like we talked to aim point putting, you got one, two, three, four degrees. I mean, here you got one degree to thirty degrees yep. probably. And so every slope's different. And so 
uh, I have to take a practice swing on the slope I'm on to determine that precise low point in my swing. So pretty much the for you on uneven lies, it's just all about find if if you can take some good practice swings and find your low point, then you're yep. golden. So that's yeah, you are. In my opinion, you are golden. You find your low point and you practice how hard you want to hit it at the same time. So yeah, so for me, no, notice or recognizing what I, I'm thinking too much about like what what's my takeaway doing am I am I fanning this thing too much inside I'm thinking about all these little flaws I have even though I know I'm good at putting the club back on the ball that's all I should be thinking about and as long as I have an idea of where that low point is that's really really all I should be thinking about it is and that's all that's wrong every time a good player hits a bad shot and I say any time, there's obviously exceptions, but mm -hmm. most of the time when a really good player hits a bad shot, I don't care if it's with a driver or chipping, any time they hit a bad shot, the ball's in the wrong place. Yeah, I could, I could agree <laughs> on that. It's not their swing. Somehow the ball got they're too far away, too close, too far left, too far right. The ball wasn't in the place they're used to being. But then when we got uneven lies we're talking about, well, that changes that whole equation, too, because it's not in the, it shouldn't be in the same normal place mm -hmm. because of the hill. And that's what, in my opinion, that's the neat part of this game is, is under, learning to hit it from all these different situations. And that, that's what's always intrigued me and how to figure out how to do it. Would agree. And I would suggest to any golfer out there, this the short game area at your club or where you practice, this is the place you should be spending the majority of your time. And again, it's all about coming down and getting curious and just experimenting and it's okay to mess up. Right, mm -hmm. that's what, I tell that all the time to people. Everybody's scared of making a mistake. Don't be scared, experiment, find, find, try, even, even driver, you know, get too far away from one and hit it and see what happens and get too close and see what happens and play it too far back and see what happens. See what happens when you close it too much. Right. See what happens when you open it too much. It, yep. Absolutely. And that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you might accidentally find the right spot for you along the way there too. And you say, Holy cow, I hit a great one. I did that. We totally agree. And so, um, I, I think that's the beauty of this game. And, you know, why we can do it for a living, there's so many different people and there's not really one way to do things. Nope. And so, um, but you know, you just try to do your best and that, that's what I've always tried to do anyway. All right, Ed, so we've moved into more of the basic chip shot. Now, I don't know what you tell your students, but a lot of times what I just try to explain is a chip shot is a shot that's gonna run more than it flies. The pit shot is one that's going to fly more than it runs. Okay. Now, down at the PGA Shore in Orlando, I got to watch Brad Faxon talk, and he was all about let's get the ball on the ground as quickly as we can, which I'm a big proponent of it. And I myself try to, I've been trying to chip with less loft. You know, like a lot of people, was always using my, my 58 degree for the most part, and I'm decent with it and pretty good, but. I notice you're gonna you get the balls a lot closer, more consistently. The more, the, you know, with less loft. So, I got a pitching wedge here. Now, we were just talking about setup earlier. Do you like again staying 50-50? You said you like being really close to the ball. I kind of preach to people narrow stance. I like having a little bit of weight forward because I think it gives them the more opportunity to bottom out in front of the ball and get. The cleaner contact okay but i'm okay with people also you know todd Sones talked to the coaching summit last year about he really is about people moving into the lead side and then you got the new way of let's lean left and stay left but i don't i don't necessarily think most people can are coordinated enough our club golfers to do that i think if we just get a little bit of weight forward the right setup and then we can hit a shot um, uh, I don't disagree with any of that. Um, agree with all, most of it. So I, I would tell you that for most recreational players, I find very narrow stance, feet together, and mm -hmm. then they can be 50-50. Um, I think the less loft you have, the more you want to lean left. So if you were using a 58 degree club to hit this low shot, then you could put the handle forward and lean left. Okay. 
and, and that'll help you hit a lower running shot. But when you go to pitching wedge or seven iron or an eight iron, I think the more you lean left, the more you'll deal off the club and you already got such little loft. That yeah. I think you'll have an issue there. But Another old school thing I like to tell people, I don't know how often you, I like to get the handle a little bit higher, get the toe. I noticed that. I noticed that. Get the toe that. a little bit more engaged. I, I know that's a big Raymond Floyd thing used to do that. Uh -huh. A lot of the old school guys back in the day. Uh -huh. To me, I just, I, I don't chunk it as often. It's obviously not an absolute kind of thing, but for me, it works pretty well. Interesting. I haven't seen many people do that in a long time. Um, I, I chip that way with low lofted clubs. Seven iron, eight iron, yeah. nine iron, almost make a putting motion with the heel off the ground. That was, was literally the old Raymond Floyd way to do it. I feel like I learned it actually from one of my dad's old Billy Casper videos. Awesome. Can't remember though, totally. I know, I mean, I know I hear a lot of tour guys, I know Luke Donald's a big proponent, a lot of them, they pitch a lot of times with that, feeling like that toe is a little bit more engaged. And I've heard obviously off of tight Bermuda lies, that's a good way to not, not, not to chunk it. Mm -hmm. For I mean, those youngsters out there, the most underrated player in the history of tournament golf is Billy Casper. I've heard that. Good shot there, huh? Thank you. Yeah, I feel like that uh, the, the bump and run is kind of a lost art, you know. Um, yeah, it is. I, I guess it, I think it depends where you play. I, I think it depends on the surface, the grass mm -hmm. that you have. And um, obviously in Europe, if you're playing link style courses, that's still the way to play almost every shot. Um, um, around here, with zoysia green surrounds that we have here in Missouri, most places, um, you have a lot of options in terms of what shots you can play off of zoysia. We totally but you, agree. But you have to be careful. You, you have to land it on the green almost here in Missouri, because if you land it in the zoysia short, it's not a very predictable bounce. You kill it, yeah. And so, um, so that when you're determining what shot you're hitting when from when in our part of the country, you, in my opinion, you have to at least plan on landing it on the green. And so then it depends how much green you have to work with and then how high a shot or low a trajectory you need to play. And that determines is it a pitch shot or a chip shot. Exactly. So it's like agree. now I could pick up my back up my lob wedge. Now, say we're a little bit further back here. Pitch shot, what what do you like to tell people? Okay, we got loft now. This is gonna get the ball a little bit more up in the air. I mean, a lot, a lot of things, you know. For me, I'm trying to, you know, obviously get the person to realize we're kind of kind of trying to turn, return that club back to kind of its address conditions. Okay. And then when I'm thinking of a pitch shot, I like thinking of I'm releasing the handle, not really the face, so I'm letting the handle kind of come back at me so it often feels like a, a scoopy motion, which in turn kind of utilizes the bounce and gets some spin on there. I like that one. I like that one too. I'm very handsy, even though I'm trying to, we're not, well, I'm very wristy, so to speak. Even though I kind of like, for people, the Steve Stricker, Jason Day, you know, kind of technique where we're not necessarily using a lot of it. Um, I prefer on pitch shots uh, to hinge. And then I also prefer for the handle to work up on the way down. Okay, I like that. So, um, so that's pretty much how I teach it too, so. Um, I do the same thing here depending on the lie though. I would take practice swings and see where my bottom is and that's where the ball position would go. Okay, I like that. And then um, um, I also um, like as, as this handle is working up, I like this left leg to straighten and so that turns my hips. And Do you like standing open on these shots or are you standing fairly square? 
Um, I believe if the club face is square, your stance should be square. Okay. I think if you open it to hit it higher, then you can open your you stance. You can open, yeah. And if you're wanting to hit a little draw hook running pitch shot, you could close your stance too, just like you would do in a full swing. Yeah, a lot of guys on tour, they actually, they will set up, you know, they're, they'll aim the club at the, at the target and then they'll stand closed and again, they're feeling very, you know, drawy, even though you're not necessarily swinging a big munch out to the right. Uh -huh. I like that. I like, no, I really like that shot you just hit there, so, yeah. I find that drawy feel is very good on the kind of tight lies and this kind of dormant, dormant zoysia there. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but it's all, it's all very interesting. There's, there's no one way to do it out there, folks. It's whatever kind of works. <clears throat> yep, I agree. And then when it comes to pitching and utilizing that uh, that bounce, I don't know, Ed, what you think about. How often do you tell people, especially if they're trying to, say, maybe hit a mega, a little bit higher than standard pitch shot, are you telling them to at all to visualize landing that club slightly behind it? Um, I find, for me, I find it helps them a lot of times. Yeah, I, I do if I, I that's a, that I've, it's a great question. I for sure do that if we were in the rough. Yeah, definitely. Um, I almost teach them to hit a bunker shot in the rough. Yeah. I mean, so and and almost the same technique. And so, um, uh, off the um, fairway lie here, um, that's when I if I want to hit it higher, um, I just set up the same way, and then I have players put instead of leaning on their front foot I have them put more weight on their back foot yeah and, and then just keep that pressure on their back foot all the way through the swing yeah and just hit it and uh, I find that's probably just weight distribution is the easiest way to control the trajectory yeah I, I like that I so, I feel like I told I it just depends on the person you know sometimes they're pretty simple and they can just you know hinge it and I you know unhinge it and they can learn how to use that face and vary the trajectory. And then some people, you know, you got to alter the ball position and whatever feels best to them. Uh -huh. yeah, I like I it, yeah. like it a lot. And then um, when I practice, especially this shot he's hitting now with his lofted club and that he would, he would use this club if he's 10 yards away or he would use this club if he's 20 or if he's 30 or if he's 40, I would imagine, mm -hmm, am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, I'm a big proponent of practicing the yardages and learn to play by yardage. Um, and so I like having a bucket of balls and I put a towel down 10 yards away from me and I learn to fly it 10 yards in the air. And then I put it 20 yards and I learned to hit it 20 and I learned to hit it 30. I think the best players play by yardage even around the green and the the issue is like when we're standing here and we can see the whole green well it's pretty easy to see your landing spot where you want it to land and go but if we went down on the other side of the hill on the other side of that bunker where the green's way up above us all you're going to see is the flag mm -hmm. and um unless you walk up there and you can see where you want it to land to paste on where the pin is then you need to estimate what that yardage is when you get down there because that's your only going to be your only feel is, hey, I've got to hit this 25 yards or I've got to hit it 30 yards. Totally and, agree. And you just have to commit to those yardages and play instead of by feel. If you go down the bottom of the hill and don't have a yardage in mind, you don't know how deep that bunker is from this angle, but that bunker is a nightmare for most people and they're scared to death of it. So mm -hmm. two things are gonna happen. They're either gonna make sure they're not in the bunker and then they're gonna be down here off the green on the other side, or they're mm -hmm. gonna decelerate because they're swinging too hard mm -hmm. and then they'll chunk it and they'll be in the bunker anyway. Would you agree with that? I'm oh, 100%. I, for the first part of my career, I did not have a system, folks, and I would tell you, it. It's not easy when you don't have a system and you don't have, it doesn't have to be like, I like thinking of the clock now. So like at my short game area at sunset, I'll go out there 
and you know usually we have three flags and usually at the top of the tee box you it goes 30 50 60. Mm -hmm. so i go out there with my lob wedge and even in my 54 gap wedge and i'm practicing okay i know an eight to four 58 is going to carry about 20 yards and it's going to release to that 30 mark i know my nine to three is carries about 45 and releases to the 50 and then i even know i can hit a really firm nine to three and it's going to go to my 60 yard mark and i'm telling you if you can learn that system and especially if you can learn just to hit the ball from those small distances i mean you're going to become uh, a world-class ball striker right but even if you're if you're a 20 handicapper that's never broken a hundred yeah if you can if this spring and summer if you didn't do anything but learn to hit a 10 yard shot a 30 yard shot and a 50 yard shot would totally if, agree if you could hit those three yardages every time you have them you'll break a hundred because you would get up and down more for pars and bogeys you'd right. eliminate those doubles and triples yep that's what most people and maybe 50 yards might be the most important yardage for a, for a really high handicap and they don't need a sand wedge or lob wedge for that no you shoot, no you can do, i don't care what it takes to get it on the green just learn to get it on the green somewhere from 50 yards Love and it. you'll be amazed at what scores you'll shoot would you agree with that mm, i would totally agree yep and um and so that's probably the most important shot to learn to hit right? yeah 50 yards we actually did that with our ladies at sunset last year for our our ladies night out league and we're gonna do it again but you know You've heard of the Operation 36 right. system, you know, we've we've been doing it at Sunset for a while. But yeah, start at 25 yards, then go to 50, then we do 75, and then 100. Uh -huh. Think if you had that those, that yardage in, 70, 100, 75, 50, right. 40, 30, 20. You'd right. be, you would probably go from, you know, your 25 handicap to maybe a 10. Yeah, I was going to say 12, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. Nope, I couldn't agree more, so... All good stuff. All very good stuff.